Sister Jennifer was pre Pastor Jennifer was preaching about patient and affliction, mm -hmm. and I was glad that she clarified that it isn't always uh, suffering for Christ, because. I mean, I have suffered for Christ. I went to public school, and there were certain things that happened there. But I wouldn't say as an adult I've really suffered for Christ. Um, and I've worked in a Christian school, and so it's, it's really been a privilege to be able to do that. But there's other kinds of afflictions that we face. So about, I, I've lived in Hong Kong 14 years teaching, teaching at the same school. But I really felt the Lord was asking me to step out and do something different. And I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know whether that meant going back to Canada whether I would stay here, I didn't know. But I had to let my school know in October. And so that meant I had a whole school year, basically, of knowing that this is the last of everything in this school, which was great. And it was exciting, got closer to June, and I'm wondering, Lord, what are we doing? And I didn't really have any clear direction, but I felt that I wanted to stay in Hong Kong, and I felt the Lord was saying, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. So then I was wondering, like, what's going to happen? And I had applied for a university to do my master's, and I got into the program. So that was the first door that the Lord opened. And the program was part online and part in the summer back in Canada. And I thought, that's an answer to prayer, because I do want to stay in Hong Kong. And I felt that the Lord was leading that way. And so this seemed to confirm that. So then I thought, well, I'll pay the bills by tutoring, which is a pretty good thing in Hong Kong. I wouldn't be able to do that in Canada. At home, there's not as much tutoring, so Hong Kong's very much that kind of culture. And so I said, Lord, you're going to have to provide. And so almost right away, I had enough enough clients to pay the bills. And I just said, Lord, I can do this. Notice the eye. I can do this. Uh, so I finished my studies in two years, but along the way, there would be clients that would drop off. They would stop tutoring, didn't need tutoring anymore. And it got to the point where it's like living day to day, week to week in this Lord. You know, holidays would come up and then families would go away and then there wouldn't be tutoring. And it'd be like, Lord, I don't have enough money for that. You're going to have to do something. And it was just, the Lord really showed his faithfulness. But it also taught me how much I tend to rely on myself rather than rely on him. And it really pushed me to just trust him every time he pulled it out, every time he met my need. Um, so after I was finished my studies, I was looking for a job. And again, the question came up, should I be going home? And doors kept closing there. And I thought, well, if you're wanting me to stay here, you're going to have to open something up. And it's amazing how we get kind of fixed into our thinking because when I left my job, I'd been teaching several years, and I didn't want to start back at square one. You know, as a beginning teacher, you teach whatever anybody else doesn't want to teach. And I was like, I'm too old for that. <laughs> I've got too much experience for that. And so, uh, first started off, nothing happened, nothing happened. I, I got a, a subbing job for a week, and I was like, I applied to that school, and I got was offered a position, and I just didn't feel comfortable about it. And yet there wasn't anything else, and I said, Lord, I really don't get what you're saying here. But I said no to that job. And then the fall came. Uh, I had several other interviews. Nothing came of that. I was getting really discouraged and really frustrated and feeling down. It's affecting my confidence. It's like, Lord, what are you doing? What are you saying? Am I not hearing? Um, and I, I was really losing confidence. And Linda was a very big encouragement at that time, and, and others in the church as well. Uh, I got a subbing, one day subbing job in September, because I've been begging the Lord. I said, you know my needs, and he, he provided one day of subbing. On the way back from that subbing, I, he, I got a call for a three-month subbing. I said, thank you, Lord. And then at the end of that three-month subbing, I got a call for a six-month subbing. It's like, Lord, I'm seeing a pattern, but I don't really want to do something. Uh, and I really thought the, the, after the subbing that I would really end up uh, continuing in that school, and that was actually the same as Gleba school. I said, Lord, this would be perfect. We could work together again. I know where you're leading in this. No, not going to do that. And I realized maybe I'm really fixed in my thinking. What am I not seeing that the Lord is trying to point me towards? And uh, there was a school that I hadn't thought of at all of applying to. 
a school that had had some kind of difficulties and I thought, well, why would I want to sign up? Uh, if they're going to close down next year, they're not closing down, by the way. Uh, but that was my thinking. And also, they were American. I know some of you might be shocked, but I didn't really want to teach an American school. <laughs> I'm Canadian. I was thinking kind of, let's go the IB road. And so, yeah, the American schools were up. And, but then I applied there. And at every step, so I got an interview. Every step along the way, the Lord confirmed, this is where I want you. Um, a big part of it is that the principal who's there is very supportive of special education, which is the area I wanted to work in. And that's what I've been praying to the Lord about. Lord, I really want to be working in the area that I'm trained in, that I enjoy. And he opened that door, and the principal there is so supportive of that. And total land of blessing where I'm working right now. And the Lord's perfect timing, the Lord's perfect provision, but the steps to get there are three years of little bit by little bit by little bit. And trusting that he is doing and that I can't do it myself. Yeah. The verses that I thought about as I went along, I uh, was thinking of, you know, Peter getting out of the boat. And Jesus saying, you have little faith, why do you doubt me? And then the other verse that Jennifer had also brought up, which was uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11, cleanse I have for you good and for a good future and to put our trust even when it seems like it's not like that but that's the direction that's headed